Hey everyone, and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. Today I'm at the New England International Auto Show in Boston, Massachusetts. And today we're gonna to take a look at the all new 2020 Mazda CX-30. Now, we have checked out a lot of crossovers on the channel over the last few months, and the subcompact segment is actually starting to grow. And the Mazda CX-30 is going to be a really top dog competitor in this segment, as I think under $30,000, you're gonna be very surprised at what this vehicle offers. Now Mazda hasn't said much about whether the CX-30 is going to replace the CX-3. Seems like they're going to coexist, but in my opinion, with the CX-3 only selling about 1,000 vehicles per month, and really around 16,000 a year in the United States, it's very possible that the CX-30 could most likely take that place. And because of what it offers, I think it could really be a good seller for the Mazda brand. So seeing as though this is not going to be a full review, we're gonna do a very quick first look at this crossover and see what it offers. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right into this video. So starting off with the rear end, as you can tell, we got full LED taillights, which look really good. Also, I love the shade of red for this car. Now, one thing that's important to note here is that the Mazda CX-30 is built on the Mazda 3 platform, so it looks like a Mazda 3 hatchback, which I think is what makes this vehicle look so good. Now, most importantly that I really want to point out here is that for a vehicle under $30,000, you get a power lift gate. Now, I have never heard of this in this segment. I, all the subcompacts I've checked out do not have a power lift gate, which looks, which is really amazing. It's a um, great feature to offer. So that's one that really stands out to me. Now, also want to point out here is that we're checking out uh, the premium trim, which is the top trim. I believe this is the only trim that you get a power lift gate on. So uh, if you are looking for a vehicle under $30,000, make sure you check out the premium. So for rear cargo room, you're going to find 20.2 cubic feet of rear cargo space which actually is somewhat behind uh, the Honda HRV and Nissan Rogue Sport. However, you do get more cargo room than you would find in most hatchbacks in this price range. So taking a look at the side profile, as you can tell, there's a lot of plastic cladding on the wheel wells, and that's what really distinguishes this crossover from the Mazda 3 hatchback. Now, some people would like it, some people don't like it. It kind of reminds me of the Hyundai Kona to a certain degree when it comes to the wheel wells. Uh, but I think what Mazda's trying to do here is really distinguish it from the hatchback and really tell consumers that this is a real crossover. So for passengers in the back, I adjusted the driver's seat all the way back. And as you guys know, if you've been watching my reviews as of late, I'm 5'5", and I have to be honest, I don't have a lot of room here. Uh, usually with rear seats all the way back, I at least have some room to play with. But if you're taller around 5'7", five, 5'8", five, you would most certainly be cramped and I'm cramped. So if I was forced to sit in the back seat of a CX-30, I would hope that my driver would be, would be a little shorter than this. But let's be fair. So center seat, I have to be honest, it's a little tight, it's still a bit tight. Um, most likely I have to adjust the seat all the way forward for me to still be comfortable. But uh, like I say in all my reviews, especially where the rear hump is aggressive, if you have three people back here, definitely put the shortest person in the center. And then on the passenger side, where I adjusted the seat all the way up, I have a lot of room to work with here. Uh, so um, hopefully this vehicle is geared towards shorter people because if, the, if there were people that were tall in the front seat area, I'd be very cramped, especially if the person, if the seat is adjusted all the way back. Um, but when at normal um, seating position level, I'm fine right here. I have enough room to move around and uh, really stretch my legs. So around so somewhere around five eight, five nine could most certainly be comfortable back here if the seat isn't all the way back. And then another point I want to make here is that when it comes to rear headroom, uh, definitely taking that into consideration if you are taller, you have people who are always in the back that are taller, because I have seen more headroom in competitors. But one thing I do want to point out here though, is that you do get two rear air vents, which we did not see in the Subaru Crosstrek at $28,000. And you also have two cup holders and an armrest. Now stepping inside, this is where the CX-30 wins a lot of brownie points for me because when it comes to interior quality, I have not found a competitor in this price range and segment that could even compete or even compares to this. You have a two-tone leather interior, which just is, an, is really, really nice. You have soft touch leather along the center console and you also have soft, soft touch padding uh, for your armrest as well. You have these base seats, which look really good. And just when it comes to uh, the simplicity and how clean it is, 
this is definitely top notch. But also when it comes to just some of the minor details, you have gloss black for your center console around your button layout, and you also have that same gloss black and leather trim uh, for your side uh, buttons as well for your windows and also your, your uh, mirror. But when, just when it comes to sitting in this car, this is really nice. Now, Mazda does say that the CX-30 is targeting people who don't have families yet, don't have families yet or, may not, or may not even be married. So this vehicle will definitely be more for people who live in urban areas, but I could definitely see this kind of branch out to somebody in their mid-30s as well. Uh, just the way the button layout is, it's very luxurious for the price. I think that's where Mazda has an opportunity to really start taking sales away from it, some, some of its competitors because I can definitely say maybe outside of Subaru, there really is no one else in this segment that's offering this amount of comfort at this price range. Now, unfortunately, we can't access the infotainment system today, but you do get a roller dial with quick, ac quick access buttons along with your uh, volume knob as well. And I have to say, uh, this definitely reminds me of what you'd find in a Lexus or Acura, and especially where Mazda is trying to appeal more towards that luxury side of things. Um, this is right in line with those competitors. So I think what Mazda is trying to do here is really kind of blur the lines of consumer car to luxury car. And I think Mazda has found a really good formula for that, especially with the CX-30. You'll also get three level heated seats on the premium as well. There is an extra button, which would look like where you'd put your uh, ventilated seats. Now, most likely Mazda won't introduce that here in the United States, just because I think they're really trying to get the CX-30 as close to $30,000 as, as possible. But you also get um, a nice cubby for your smartphone along with two cup holders. You also get for your center armors and center um, console, you have enough room for a smartphone or small items along with a USB input. So when it comes to the front seating area, this is where I would say Mazda might be at the top of the list in the subcompact crossover segment. But it's just really for the uh, rear seats where I have a bit of an issue. And I think that's where it might be a little tough for them uh, against their competitors. But up front for the driver, for the front passenger, this is probably the best you can get at $28,000. So the Mazda CX-30 is already on sale here in the United States. So hopefully within the next few weeks, I'll be able to do a full review of this crossover. But at the end of the day, when it comes to a vehicle around $28,000, and if you don't have a family and you're single, and you're looking for a premium luxury or you're looking for a luxury feel at this price range, the Mazda CX-30 should definitely be at the top of your list. Obviously, when it comes to the rear seating area, that's where I think the negatives come in just because there's really not a lot of room. And I've seen more room when it comes to competitors in this price range and segment. But overall, with what you get with the technology features, the comfort features, and that luxury aspect, and that luxury feel, uh, this would definitely be uh, a vehicle that should be at the top of your list if you are looking for a subcompact crossover. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.